Hey guys, so if you're new here or if you're not, if you want to hear me voice act, head over to our main channel, links down below. And if you don't, this channel's solely for TTS. Um, if you want to know all the details about what's going on, we have a stream up that you can go and watch, but let's just get into the video. So I'm a Necron Cryptic, so what? Part number seven. Impossible that they were all purged before we began the war with the old ones, this is known. She hissed at me. Not all of them were purged, some remained. Harboring resentment for their unjust she pressed the wicked razor edge to my throat once I tried to say that. My body shook. Why is it that my neck is always fucking threatened? Ah uh, oh. For being so utterly pee purged by the tree arc. She lowered her scythe from my throat. Why they would try to ruin his overall positive plans to ward off the tyrannids is beyond me. It's during this conflict that I can look no further into the future. I admit. We spoke ideally on a few other matters, but eventually she did move on to one last topic. You and Trazin are planning an expedition in the near future. What conspiracies are you planning cryptic? I inhaled sharply at that. She won't let me just avoid the questions anymore and will press me with the threat of death. We plan on heading up to the Galactic West. Ish with Oricon soon. I'm looking for something I saw within my visions. She gestured for me to go on. I really prefer you see it in person. I can't stress the importance of information on this asset not leaking. I held up my hands. It would be a great import that would cause even the Awakened Council squabble and murder one another for it. Me, Trazin and the Bast I mean the esteemed Diviner are the best ones to locate these assets of great import. She thought about it. She agreed a few weeks later of a tense silence. She informed me she would be joining me on this excursion once it commenced. I let out a sigh of relief, as she left to attend to other matters elsewhere. Though I felt she was likely to be consulting the Celestial Orrery. I rested back and noticed that many of the Deeth Marks had headed off elsewhere. I felt as though I was in the clearing for now. And then like clockwork. The Snake Oricon emerged from some shrubbery. Immediately my non-existent blood begins to boil. Oricon couldn't keep yourself busy for even three centuries. He makes a clicking tongue sound. He'll have you know. I quickly interrupted him. That you were probably spying on me weren't you? You fucking worm. Don't try and fucking jumping back in the timeline you snake. Let's have a normal conversation. I quickly stepped up to him and straightened my posture before him. I had a pretty bad hunch most of the time. But now I was just under 8 feet tall. Since you're here, let's talk shop. He sneered, or at least made the sound of sneering. You came here for some reason. I don't actually care what for. You heard what I said didn't you Oricon? I leaned uncomfortably close to him. I did hear a few things when I came to visit you. He admitted. Bullshit you'd only come somewhere for your own selfish gain. I snapped back. You probably heard most of that. So I think it's time I start focusing on your studies. In a few decades or a century Trazin and I will be making a heading for a deeply unexplored section of space. You're going to help us find what we're looking for and I shall hand over the first key to help you achieve a light form body. I see Trazin's constant tampering with the orcs giving some cause for concern for the cloistered members of the Eldery. And maddeningly I see stars and black moons moving at both your and Trazin's orders. The significance of these divinations are maddening. Utter madness. He dismissed. But for me this was a fucking bingo if I ever saw one. I quickly give a fist pump. That's actually the one thing that Oricon could actually make me happy. He saw me do a fist pump, and maybe do a tiny little jig with my legs. He quickly voiced his confusion. What? Does this portent mean something to you? My not answering and swiftly stopping my jig. What do these visions mean Ishka? Smugly I told him. It means all of my plans are bound to come to fruition. Slightly concerned about the Eldery right now but overall these moons are a great sign. Oricon was talking about the Blackstone Fortresses without even knowing it. They were each moon sized, 900ish miles wide give or take. Oricon was just vibrating with anger. Fuck did it ever feel so fun fo have a leg up on Oricon. I'm going to lord over him for the next 17 million years and it's going to be great. Well since you've just seen a fraction of my divinatory power why don't you run along? 
I need you to go ahead and focus on your own personal studies. I made a shoe gesture. I don't need your talents to find any siblings tombs to let me murder them or anything along those lines. I was calling him out, for when he helped an awakened council member. He sputtered out half a curse. Why don't you leave and do that time bubble ritual, you'll need it if you want to hone in your studies for a few centuries. I was able to get him to leave without much of a fight. I just royally pissed him off, he may have the power of time but fuck is he lacking any patience. I shouldn't antagonize him but man does the little bitch deserve it. The next century and a half were mostly dedicated to mass producing everything I had already built. 100 units of the mobile mounted gorse destructor, 45 sets of the mobile mounted in mythic exterminator, 10 sets of hyperphase scarab swarms. By the time I had finished all that we finally received our planet's shipment of Canoptex Scorpioids and their Canoptex Scorpets underlings. Exactly 500 sets of the trio units. This was the level of progress I fucking loved. Phileas personally delivered them along with the massive amounts of the mass produced in mythic weapons. So these are the forces you will be using for the expedition. She asked me. I gave a slight chuckle. I actually had plans to have a lot more units assist me, you remember the members of Hementh dynasty? I plan on asking for their aid in securing this asset. With Phileas in tow, I approached Ferran Narmouth with my proposal. My lord, I have come to ask for your dynasty's assistance. I gave a deep bow to the Ferran. I found him in a section of the tomb with a host of his own overlords and cryptex. He let out a scoff. What do you have to ask cryptex? I have little patience for your antics. I'm guessing he held some resentment towards me, even if saved his world. I wanted to ask you lended some of your warriors, immortals and your cryptic Nehebko to our expedition. Since they are already awake it would be nice to have them with us. I can guarantee dividends of rewards will be returned to you should you choose to assist us. He let out a slight snarling sound. Your words are hollow to me cryptic. But by your divinations we are still living. I will aid you. Right double quotation mark. That's great news, I think to myself. He held up a finger but I have a condition. My people have noticed irregularities within your canoptic constructs. They hold a level of thought and such complex construction. When our tomb is to be constructed, I would ask you to upgrade our own canoptic constructs to a similar level of competence. I nodded rapidly. It can be done. The next few decades passed by in a quick blur. We crammed hundreds of thousands of Canoptic constructs into each of the ships we had. Then came the forces lent to us by the Ferran Narmouth. 800 warriors, 250 immortals, 80 deeth mercs, and lastly his chronomancer and Nehabgor. Phileas was bringing an obscene amount of Trioc Praetorians. Which I should have already guessed. Trazin. I didn't know what all he had brought but I had the feeling he was packing a lot in terms of tesseract labyrinths. Oricon brought a dozen other cryptics, which I could tell weren't fully awakened. No tabletop RPG is complete without beautiful models on the table and the best place to get models is from us. If you check the link below we have everything you could need for your magical realm. Only the finest of big titty wafers here. But if you're not into models or don't play with models we got you covered with subclasses such as the Gachimashi Wizards, the Simp Warlock and the North FC Fighter. Also we have started selling 5th edition adventures with our first one featuring Belle Delphine, the succubus that has poisoned the town's well and turned the villagers into simps. If any of that stuff sounds fun to you go ahead and check the link below but let's get back to the video. Thanks to the massive galaxy map I had my voidments to make, I'm able to pick out our heading. The fleet will be following all Chimza's equation to our destination. It's going to be the longest voyage yet 49 years for all of us to even just reach the gothic sector. It should give me ample time to complete a few projects and once more review my collection of lore on the Blackstone Fortresses. All of us take flight from my tomb world, a few awakened Necrons see us off. It was strangely comforting to see a Necron warrior waving goodbye. As soon as we left my home system we began picking up speed. We would have Oricon put his disgustingly great skills to the test to help us travel the void. We sailed across the endless expanse of stars, Oricon having navigated our way through the void. 
He used my charts overlaid with his own star maps and calculated our flight path. We flew the orbit of great stars, using their gravity well to rocket ourselves onwards or make sharp turns. We the waves of cosmic winds, witnessing thousands of independent solar systems in brief blurs as our speed perpetually rose. Oregon had been interconnected to his host of 12 cryptech servants. He had been siphoning their own astromantic skills and processing powers to make dozens of minuscule alterations to his flight plan. Even my own Voidmancer admitted that they would have been unable to compete with the intricate level of course adjustment he demanded. In only the first two years we were traveling thousands of leagues per hour. I kept watching on, quite impressed with his talents. I would have likely kept watching for another year had I not been royal spooked. We flew through a field of migrating plasmic medusae, outspeed rupturing them as we flew past. I could see a kaleidoscopic detonation of electricity blur past us as we continued to hurtle further into the void. I tore myself from the window. Right now I could be doing other stuff. So I headed for my quarters on the ship. Working on something is a good start. I hit a whole ass brick wall in my projects. The mind is more than willing, but my soul is just not in it. I was making more hyperface weapons, but I got so tired of working on any projects. I scrapped half of what I was doing and ended up just laid out in my chambers. Eventually after 4 months of just sitting about I started looking back my own memories. I'm missing a lot of things from when I was just a normal human guy. I keep busying myself trying to forget the fact that my old life is over. I let myself actually just let hit me in waves, all the stuff I keep avoiding thinking about. My family no longer exists in this version of reality meaning I will never see my sisters or parents ever again. The friends I had enjoyed hundreds of hours of video games, tabletop role playing games, or just talking, are all gone now. I'm immortal now. Having already outlived my parents four times over, but I'll never have a partner, or start a family. Thoughts of mortality like these would have utterly crushed me in life, but I can't muster a single bit of emotion. All I feel is numbness, that's all I've felt these last four centuries of being awake. Even when I experience joy or fear. It was all so dull, like I've been exaggerating everything subconsciously. I'm in a lobotomized malfunctioning Necron cryptic having overwritten what was left of him. I sat there, quietly flickering through it all for a few years, thinking about my brief moment as a human, running each second. I played quiet tunes through my vocal emitter. Each melody from the hundreds of musicians I had heard during my lifetime, humming along to each tune, recalling who I had been with upon first hearing it. I mumbled one song as I played one of the final songs I had heard with my grandma had passed. At least one person wouldn't be wondering where I had gone. These were the embers of emotions my soul had been aching to feel in this emotionless metal husk. I wasn't sure how much time had passed before I eventually left my chambers. I moved in a somber haze, my body more or less moving of its own volition. Not that I really even realized. I spoke words to scarabs, cryptics, it all just came out as static to my own ears. They followed my commands. Commands I didn't know anything about, gathering things for me, metals, materials for unknown reasons. I would transmute them in ways I had no reason to, I didn't bother even scanning what I was doing. Working away at the metals and blackstone, I worked on intricate designs that I had no idea the purpose of. This was felt all like an involuntary reflex, just a subroutine that this body did. The one soulless body moved of its own accord and I didn't really notice it. Not in control and not even knowing or caring. I'm approached by hundreds of canoptic constructs. Occasionally enlisting their aid to shape my small construction. They are taking shape one by one. Small frames made from the deviant variant of one of my phase canoptic scarabs swarms. Their little shells were made of the Cetan necrodermis, making them capable of phasing in and out of reality at will. The laws of reality bending to their will on a smaller scale. They could through impenetrable walls, or should they like, they could phase through living metal into a necron. I wasn't making any of this. Be what remains of the real Ishska, once high transmogrifier of the Vuklet dynasty. Slivers of my consciousness have stirred, memories of my being beginning to bubble to the surface. 
I saw brief glimpses of myself doing actions over the centuries. I wasn't in control, but nor did I care. Memories not of my own stream throughout my consciousness, visions of a short but joyful life, much spent reading not for any grand study but for amusement. A man thing, a human controlling my body, puppeteering it desperately to prevent so much turmoil, he is aware of what is to come to the galaxy. He seeks to create order, controlling what he can, and avoiding what he can't. I have begun to gain access to my own body for the last decade, and I have used this time to create one construct to demand order. My consciousness in this body is gradually fading but I have completed a set of 10 cortical subjugator scarabs. Biyshka, or well the person who is inhabiting the cryptex body. After 11 years of having an out of body I snap back into reality. I find myself in the lower decks of the ship, what's more I've been broadcasting songs through my secondary vocal emitter found in my mechanical tail. I had been playing Beatles songs for a damn long time. I stopped the broadcast after I finished broadcasting Strawberry Fields Forever. Taking a peek around I noticed a few things were off to say the least. I had a full array of new tools for constructing and shaping blackstone and few ingots of the Auramite, Iskar, that I had managed to make while I was kinda daydreaming. Added to that fact there were two other constructions with me, a set of odd looking phase scarabs and some weird canoptic. Necron hybrid. Nope, one thing at a time. I will address the strange constructs another time. For now I need to figure out how I made enough Auramite to make an Aquilon Terminator. At best I can make a spool's worth of the stuff in a few years but somehow while I was out I made bars of the stuff. I held up one of the heavy bars in my hand and flipped it over. I'll have to review my memories. How did I manage so much in just a 10 year haze? Questions for later. I can definitely do something with this. I think with this I could finally work on getting myself a sim paternal weave. A few decades back Quilka had shown me the means by which to phase harden metals. It's a messy matter of aligning energy particles in a very neat formation, and then carefully folding the metal extensively. Following it called for calibrating the metal within an item called a dimensional forge so its wicked edge could vibrate across dimensions. Science babble that I was way too underqualified to do, so I relied on my engrams and practice skill to do it for me. Using some of the new tools, I got to work. I started by using a necrodermis wafer to start off with a test. Phase hardening was a bitch to do. More often than not it ended up with fractals of sharpened energy charged shards impaling every surface. Making phase weapons was easy but making phase hardened had so many variables to it. If you left the wafer in the forge for even a microsecond to longer than necessary it was viable to decay into dust. Too little in the forge and it would explode in a supercharged shrapnel storm. I must have had my fingers or entire limbs torn off by the cutting explosion at least 5 dozen times over the decade. Eventually after another 8 years I managed to perfect the method to create a phase hardened plate of necrodermis. Now with all that practice out of the way. I was ready to move on to amerithene, a difficult mineral to produce but one which I would be able to create given some time. Which I had plenty of. Rural is a great app available on the Apple and Google Play Store as well as desktop for creating beautiful 8-bit character art. The app has 14 supported races, 150 plus weapons, 400 plus armor pieces for you to mix and match, 20 plus mini bases. There is that much to work from I was able to make Cold Steel the Hedgehog, the God Emperor of Mankind, Pepe and they are always adding more artwork. The app also has a character sheet to help keep track of everything during games. And if that wasn't enough you can play about with the app for free with limited artwork. So go ahead check it out and if you decide to buy the app use promo code NICKBEDIA for 10% off and it lets them know we sent you. It's a great sponsor and a great app and we hope you guys go ahead and check it. But let's get back to the video. It was a lengthy process of smelting metals together, shaping them into thin sheets. Transmuting the paper thin sheets, to alter their composition. The metallurgist's cord was a massive help but perfecting the purity of a metal was an incredibly difficult thing. Dozens of tiny details required my attention to ensure hundreds of other issues did not pop up. The sheet could crack, shattering due to 9% impurities, 
Melting in the forge. Warping in the forge. So 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 many possible slip ups. I nearly got myself killed trying this. We hit year 40 when I successfully made two plates of phase hardened amerithene. One final step was left to make my relic. The next step called for threads of adamantine to mesh into the thin plate. But I actually had a better idea. The iskar bars, or imite, would be put to use. By now I could be considered a fucking semstress with how well I worked with razor thin threads iskar. Carefully weaving threads into the subatomic spaces between the atoms, with just enough space left to mesh the plates into my necrodermis. It was a nerve wracking 9 year effort, which means it could be any day now that we arrive in the sector. Both plates had been perfected into the same paternal weave. I just needed to mold it into my living metal and it would be complete. I took the two plates, this was nowhere near enough to protect my entire being. At best I could cover my forearms with this. I placed the paper thin plate over my left forearm. And with my free hand I struck the metallurgist's cord. The plate quickly modulated itself into the necrodermis, slivers of the plate slipping in between the atoms of the living metal and binding with them. My arm went stiff for a moment, and I felt the fraction of the added weight weigh me down for a moment. My arm settled and ran my finger across the golden surface of my forearm. It was a beautiful success. I did the same to the second plate, and the reaction was much the same. My arms were now secure in the improved sim paternal weave and I wanted to test this thing's strength. Naturally I summoned a gaklet with his war scythe. A gaklet be a pal and try to cut through my forearm. I asked him. Lord? He was clearly confused. Just do it a gaklet, I want to test something. I held my arm out to him. He sighed and raised up his war scythe. In an arc of crackling energy, his scythe bore downwards to slice my arm apart. His scythe clanged with a hard thud against my arm. The force of his swing dislocated my arm, servos and wires tore. My arm was pinned to the ground, a mess of wires connecting my arm to my torso, most strained and to the point of breaking. But when he did pull away, it came as no surprise that my forearm held strong. A small scratch in my paint job but no damage to speak of. I was in pain, I'm leaking nondescript coolant fluid, but it was a success. I wasn't injured where it counted. I lifted my arms in the air, giving a cheer. I've done it, the sim paternal weave is a resounding success. After my arm put itself back together, I headed up for the higher decks. Our ships were banking against a star's orbit, we were finally slowing our speed. We were pulling into the southeastmost edge of the sector. After a few months of descending we stopped to hold a meeting. Oricon had been guiding us on little more than promise power, and Phileas had just taken my word for it, but she was expecting something big. I gathered everyone aboard the executioner Phileas ship. Only the Necrons in any position of power were in attendance. I took control of the glyph screens to start a small presentation. I have brought you to the nameless uninhabited sector to claim a great prize. I started. I began my projection. Displayed on the glyph screens were dozens of clips of the Blackstone fortresses. Some destroying the fleets of the Imperium. Others showing the horrid power of their weapons batteries laying siege on planets, breaking worlds apart. In the largest screen I displayed one hurtling towards Cardia cracking the planet into pieces. The Blackstone fortresses. A star fort of incredible power. Weapons so horrendous that their usage under the Empyrean would split the galaxy in half. Every screen switched to a more grim vision, the opening of the Cicatrix Maledictum. Oricon spoke up. A star fort, it looks more like an entire Tom world taking flight. I quickly keep up. You're half right, we're looking at 900 miles of guns, ancient super technologies, and more than enough to kill entire planets from orbit. I want us to claim each and every one one in this sector. Phileas piped up. Each, just how many are there? Just in this sector, I momentarily looked at Oricon. Six can be expected to be found here alone. But I know the location of more of them. They all fell quite after that. I turned to each of the guests in attendance, then to Oricon. I really needed to drill something into him, if we were going to work together. Oricon, since by a transference you haven't used your incredible powers for the good of your people. 
He wanted to say something but I kept at it. I know you think that achieving that deific form for the entirety for the Necron is the best path to salvation. But what good will it do if there are no Necrons left to achieve that form? If we focus on fixing the timeline for the better you could achieve so much more. I know because I've seen you tumble onwards in your pursuit so frustratingly. You are a tragic and miserable existence Oricon, blessed with immeasurable foresight yet so narrow-minded and short-sighted in your goals. I want you to use your powers for something greater than yourself Oricon. And if after this venture you would wish to cloister yourself I'd be fine with it. Oricon stood in silence. My words might have hit home. I turned to Phileas, so you see why I brought you here. Why is it I wanted this to be done away from the council's eyes? Away from any Osolaria who had her brother the Ferran and his Ez killed to ensure herself a place of power. Away from Zubaka and a dynasty who can't be trusted not to continue kin feuds. And Quelka. Dear Quelka who would so easily fall a virus. Every one of them will be dead in 17 million years, I've seen it. You alone execution of Phileas, are the only member of the council who actually matters. Well guys hope you enjoy today's video. We are going to assume you have if you have stayed to the end. Consider subscribing and clicking the notification bell if you really enjoyed it to stay up to speed with any and all new videos. Also check out the links below to our shop for some fat ass titties and our sponsor Rural and be sure to use a promo code at checkout so they know we sent you and you'll get 10% off. And until next time.